uh, we discussed the concept of dryness fraction of steam. Dryness fraction of steam, we said, is an important parameter if the steam is wet. It tells us how dry the steam is or how wet the steam is. And experimentally, if you want to find the dryness fraction of steam, uh, there is a device which is known as separating and throttling calorimeter. So the device which is shown over here pictorially, it is a simple lab equipment which is useful in determination of dryness fraction of the steam. And what is the principle of that? What is the construction of that that we are going to discuss? Look at this. This is the steam generator, let us say. And the steam generator would generate certain steam which is a wet steam whose dryness fraction is to be measured. So this is the lab setup. In the actual practice, uh, let us say there is a high pressure boiler here, or some pressure, uh, some uh, medium pressure boiler here. Some steam is there, which is generated wet, let us say. And this steam is flowing through the steam main pipe from the boiler. And this steam's dryness fraction is to be known. So what we do is that we take a sample from this in a sampling tube and send it to the separating and throttling calorimeter. Now, what is the construction of this separating and throttling calorimeter? The separating and throttling calorimeter, as the name indicates, has two components. One is the separating calorimeter and other is the throttling wall. So a separating calorimeter followed by a throttling wall is a separating and throttling calorimeter. Okay, so look at this. This is a separator and this is the throttling device. This is a separator and this is a throttling device. So the steam which is emerging from this uh, boiler which is wet steam is sent into the separator. Now what happens in the separator is that uh, the moisture from the steam is let out. It is separated because the name itself is separating through the calorimeter. So some of the moisture is removed from the steam and the steam emerges at let us say point B relatively dry. So at A it is wet steam, at B it is wet steam but it is relatively dry because the moisture is removed and that moisture which is removed from the separator we can easily correct in a beaker and we can quantify it how much moisture is being removed in the separator. So the steam which is wet now but relatively more dry is then expanded in a throttling device. When it is expanded in a throttling device its pressure drops suddenly and it becomes superheated. So this is what happens here. It drops suddenly and it is uh, it has become superheated. So this superheated steam, which has come after the throttling device, which has become superheated after throttling device, its temperature is to be noted and pressure is to be noted. Because if you want to find the enthalpy of superheated steam, then as we have studied, uh, the enthalpy can be determined only by knowing two parameters. That is the pressure of the steam and its temperature. Okay, so this way uh, the steam becomes superheated and then what we do is that this superheated steam is then passed through the condenser and that steam is condensed and we can collect again the condenser. So you see over here that this device is the place where the steam is condensed and then it is collected. Okay, so what what are the observations of this device uh, of this separating and throttling calorimeter and how do you do the calculations that we would be discussing. Uh, what we are observing is first we take the pressure before throttling that is P1. We take pressure after throttling that is P2 convert them into absolute pressures. We take temperature after throttling that is T2. We take the measurement of the volume of the water which is separated and then by considering the temperature of it or the density, we get it as a mass of water separated. Similarly, we collect the condensate, which is the separated, uh, the steam which is condensed, the separated steam which is condensed in another beaker. It's again volume which is collected. And by knowing the density or specific volume, we get the mass of that. So these are the only observations which are required. Okay. So using these observations, we can now calculate the dryness fraction of the steam. So let me just explain you in brief. How do you do the calculations? So as I said, during steam sampling, we take the pressure before throttling, that is P1, convert it into absolute, take pressure after throttling P2, convert it into absolute and temperature of the superheated steam. Then what we do is that uh, we collect the mass, which is let us say M, which is the mass of condensate collected in the container provided at the bottom of the throttling calorimeter. Okay, And this is let us say capital M let us say capital M and 
the mass of the water collected in the inner chamber of the separating calorimeter, which is a small m. So here, if you collect it, it is small m. You can have this inside also the collection, and ultimately you can drain it off. Okay, so directly you can measure this mass, or you can drain it off and then collect. So this is that is a small m. So then, how do you calculate the dryness fraction? Uh, dryness fraction then x one is calculated as m upon small m plus capital M, and x two how do you calculate? For finding x two, you need to know the enthalpy of the superheated steam. Enthalpy of the superheated steam can be found out from the steam table by knowing the pressure and the temperature. Okay, so let us say this is the superheated steam. So its enthalpy can be found out by knowing the pressure and temperature, whose readings we have already taken, and we must know the enthalpy at B. Okay, this enthalpy at B. So this enthalpy at B uh, is H F B, uh, and this can be found out from the steam table, and then by knowing this X two. By knowing the HF and HFG values, HF and HFG value before throttling from the steam tables, we can find what is X two, and then X is X one into X two. Okay. Now, what is the logic of this expression that we would discuss in the uh, different lecture? But uh, from the calculation sake, what we need to do is that first find X one from the mass readings, that is the mass of the uh, small m over here and capital M over here. And that is x one, and from the enthalpy readings which we obtain by noting the pressure before throttling and pressure and temperature after throttling, we can find x two, and then we find x is the product of x one and x two. So this is the way we do the calculations and the experiment. Okay, we would see this in more detail as to why uh, such expressions are used in our next class. Thank you very much.